Hello and welcome to Advanced Chemistry. I'm Dave Hicks. Today we're going to talk about solids, liquids, and phase changes. When we finish today, you should be able to describe some of the characteristics of solids and liquids. You should be able to predict some of the energies of phase changes. And finally, you should be able to relate kinetic energy and intermolecular attractions to phase changes and some of the properties associated with these substances. So for advanced chemistry, it's important to understand the arrangement of the particles at the molecular level. Let's take a solid for instance. The main differences between these states of matter are in terms of their closeness of the particles and their ability for them to be able to move about freely. With a solid, we can see that the particles themselves are very closely packed to one another, almost touching, probably are touching. And the other thing that we know about a solid is that it really doesn't have the ability to move. That's why it's, well, solid. When we have an ice cube or something and we put it in a glass, it stays together in its square shape as an ice cube and doesn't move around or take on the shape of the glass. That's because it's in its solid form and these particles are not able to move about. Now, for a solid, they have some extremes in the way that they are structured. Uh, they could be very orderly, like a crystalline or it could just be a hodgepodge that's all just stuck together like an amorphous solid or it can be different variations of these two extremes in different parts like a polycrystalline material. Now the reason for this uh, being so tightly packed and its limited mobility is due to intermolecular attractions. The intermolecular attractions is like a force that's holding these particles together it's part of what we call Coulombic forces or Coulomb's forces, right? Let's review Coulomb's forces a little bit. Coulomb's forces are created by positives and negatives inside the particles themselves. You know, like protons and electrons. And these forces can be both repulsive and attractive. Opposites attract. Things that are the same repel each other. In this case today we're going to be mostly focused on attraction so we're looking at attractive forces. We know that there are two uh, things that are sort of in charge of the Coulomb's forces or two things that can change or vary the amount of Coulomb's forces. One, this is our equation, the F, that's the force, is equal to some constant times where it's directly proportional to the amount of the charge that's present. So the stronger the positive or negative charge is, the greater that force is going to be. Likewise, down here on the bottom is distance. Uh, it's inversely proportional to the distance between these two things. So the further separated the positive and the negative are from each other, the less the force is going to be. Now liquids, on the other hand, they are also very close to one another. Again, touching. In fact, we call both solids and liquids condensed matter, meaning that it's squished together as tightly as possible. The difference between a solid and a liquid though is right here. The liquid particles are constantly moving translational, translationally. They can move about and they're constantly colliding with each other. Uh, so um, we can learn something about what's going on at the molecular level by observing some properties at our macroscopic level which we live in. For instance, we can understand that liquids have the ability to move translationally. That's because they can flow or move from one place to another like this honey can flow from the honey dipper down to the biscuit. huh? Now, it has a resistance to flow, so we know that there's something that's holding onto it. 
and some molecules resist more than others like for instance honey is very slow and it's flowing from one to the other compared to maybe like water or something which would drip off of this uh, honey dipper immediately right uh, we also know that there are there is something that holds it together we can tell that it's being held together because it creates these uh, surface boundaries, right? These interface boundaries here, like this bug is sitting on top of water. Um, we call this surface tension. And it's caused by, you guessed it, intermolecular attractions that's holding the water molecules together. So from this macroscopic observation of it being able to move but yet still being held together tightly um, I kinda get a, a peek into the molecular level of this liquid we know that solids can change into liquids and liquids into solids this here is called a phase change diagram let's check out the axes of this this is temperature we know that as kinetic energy and this is heat energy down here this graph is all about energy the energies associated with changing states let's review energy for a second we know that energy has to be conserved that's probably the biggest thing that you should know about energy kinetic energy and potential energy can change from one form to another but in the end we got to have it all there. It's all got to still be there. We know that kinetic energy is the energy of motion. In fact, both these axes here are referring to kinetic energy. Temperature is called average kinetic energy. We'll speak of that more in a moment. Heat energy, this is being transferred by the bumping of particles and the shaking of particles. That's kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy of position. And we can see in this graph here that here is the position of a solid, and here it is as a liquid, and it's in a much different position, a different arrangement. That's what potential energy is. Potential energy is the energy of position, or the energy of the arrangement of some particles. All right, so it would make sense to me that since energy has to be conserved, as I increase the heat energy, the temperature should increase. But here, something unusual happens right here. Heat energy is still increasing, but here the temperature is not increasing anymore. Uh, we see that during a phase change, that's what's happening here. I'm changing from a solid to a liquid. I'm melting this or freezing this right here at this plateau is where that is taking place during that phase change the temperature is remaining constant the kinetic energy even though I'm adding kinetic energy to the system the kinetic energy almost appears to be disappearing <laughs> that was funny so my question is where did the energy go well we know energy has to be conserved potential energy and kinetic energy can trade places with each other but it can't disappear so here even though I'm adding more kinetic energy it must be changing into potential energy it's changing into the potential energy that is being supplied to separate these particles from each other when you separate particles we know that the amount of potential energy is increasing energy has to be put into a system kinetic energy has to be put into the system and changed into a form of potential energy in order to separate particles from each other this is true for bonds and electrons in an atom it's also true for molecules as the molecules separate from each other they have to uh, increase in their potential energy the uh, opposite is true as well when parts come together when particles come together then uh, potential energy is going to uh, be decreasing um, it's going to have to release energy as you can see here as the particles come from a liquid to a solid and the particles come together then they're going to change their potential energy decrease that potential energy and that potential energy is going to get converted into kinetic energy 
and that's what we see that's what's creating that plateau in temperature this is the exothermic process and of course our delta E is going to be negative for this one this is an overriding principle in chemistry when things come together then uh, we say that it's an exothermic process and when things are separated then it's an endothermic process uh, notice that both melting and freezing take place at exactly the same temperature there must be an explanation for that and uh, here it is phase changes are determined by two factors one of those factors is the kinetic energy the motion of the particles they try to tear apart the uh, the structure of the molecules and then there's intermolecular attractions the intermolecular attractions is what's holding the particles together um, let's take a look at uh, what temperature is temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the particles this has two implications first of all not all of the particles are going to have the same speed some of the particles will be going fast some of the particles will be going slow and the second implication is that the particles themselves an individual particle is going to be constantly changing its speed as it bumps and interacts with other particles it's going to gain or give away some of its energy changing the speed of the particles let's check out this uh, simulation from online here we have a solid you can see the particles they're stuck together they have vibrational motions but they don't have translational motions meaning they are not moving around inside of this structure they're stuck let's change it to a liquid here adds a little more energy to it and as the increases in energy you can see this energy is disrupting or tearing apart at the intermolecular attractions trying to hold all of these pieces together they're getting some translational motion so they can move around now some of you have enough energy to break away and as I add some more heat to this we'll raise the temperature up some more you'll see that now the particles become even more disrupted getting more torn apart by the kinetic energy the attractions don't have enough to hold on to them and now many of them are even able to escape into the gaseous phase right uh, look at how some of the particles are moving fast some of the particles are moving slow and uh, let me add a little more heat maybe some of the particles moving fast moving slow and you might have a very fast moving particle that bumps into something and it changes its speed right and so uh, this is a typical representation this is part of what we call our uh, kinetic theory of uh, particles today uh, this movement that you saw there can be described with what we call a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution excuse me um, is a graph that shows us the speed speed of the particles uh, let's check out the axes here first one here is the number of particles this is like the fractional amount of the particles that have that particular speed or that much kinetic energy on the bottom down here is the kinetic energy or the temperature or the speed of the particles themselves I have three different colors of lines here they represent three different temperatures the red one here is the slowest of all of them it's the coldest temperature and the green one is representing maybe like a room temperature or so and then the blue one here is representing a fairly high temperature um, the averages of these would be kind of like in the middle of the graph right so this might be uh, the average 
of the average temperature or the average kinetic energy of the particles of the cold graph. This would be the average kinetic energy of the warmer graph. This would be the average kinetic energy of the highest graph. That is its average, but you see the particles are going faster and going slower than what the average actually is. Um, now, since this is the amount of energy, and we said that energy tears apart at the intermolecular attractions, there must be a specific amount of energy required to rip the intermolecular attractions apart. And I'm just going to pick a, a spot on this graph. Let's say right here, I'm going to put this line down through here, and let's say that this here is equal to the, the kinetic energy required to break the bonds, huh? to break the intermolecular attractions. So there is the amount of kinetic energy that's required to break the uh, intermolecular attractions. If it has that much, it'll be able to separate away from the other molecules. Now, for our lowest temperature, even though that the average kinetic energy of that particle, of the particles here, is much lower than what we need for the uh, the breaking away, the breaking of the intermolecular attractions, we can see down here that there are still some of these molecules right here. These molecules have enough energy to actually break away from uh, those bonds and set themselves free from the intermolecular attractions. So even though it's very cold, we still have some molecules with enough energy to break those bonds. Likewise, let's take a look at the room temperature one. And for the room temperature one, even again, the, the average kinetic energy is lower than what we need here. However, there are plenty of molecules here that seem to have enough energy to break away from that intermolecular attraction. And that's sort of what we're seeing here. Even though the kinetic energy itself is such where most of these are kind of staying like a liquid, there are some that have enough energy to escape and go into the gaseous phase. This explains things like evaporation or vapor pressure even though it's far below the temperature where it should be turning into a gas it still has the ability to evaporate and create vapor pressure all right uh, so hopefully this is giving you some insight into solids and liquids and how they do their phase changes and the energies that are associated with that uh, I invite you to look up some of my other videos that I have related to these topics on advanced chemistry, uh, especially have one on intermolecular attractions themselves. Uh, that would fit nicely with this one, and you may want to check that out. So until next time, we'll see you later.